position of so-called safe abortion further silence the voice of the innocent unborn the new legislation represents a disproportionate response with potentially wide implications for freedom of speech and religion they are the words of the uh, catholic archbishop of armagh and primate of all ireland eamon martin he joins us now uh, archbishop these laws are going to be debated in the shannon today what concerns do you have well, good morning, Shane, first morning. of all, and everybody. You know, we, we're, we're concerned that really all of this is happening without much of a public debate. And yet, at the same time, the number of abortions in Ireland seems to be spiralling out of control. With maybe now this year, they're expecting possibly 10,000 abortions. And, and something that we thought we were told during the referendum campaign, abortion would be rare. And we would see this particular legislation as further demonizing anybody who holds the view that we actually have two lives here, two lives worthy of protection and help, even at the very last moment, uh, offering further alternatives and po other possibilities to women who might be in distress. Uh, the argument would be made that it's entirely legitimate to be uh, pro-life and to, to, to disagree with uh, abortion. But it's a different thing entirely to be protesting outside a hospital or a GP clinic, uh, potentially harassing and upsetting women who are at a particularly vulnerable stage. Absolutely. And I think that we would condemn any kind of harassment or intimidation against women in that distressed situation. And in fact, we already have laws in this country. And yet... We're not aware from the Gardaí or from others that there are a large number of these situations where people are harassed and intimidated. If somebody wants to stand outside um, a, a medical centre, a hospital, to pray, um, they will not be able to do so under this new legislation. Even peaceful, prayerful vigils uh, where people are praying for the mothers, praying for the unborn children, praying for the staff inside the hospital, that's also going to be illegal and subject to punitive sanctions, like a fine or even imprisonment, I suppose. I suppose what we're trying to say here is that um, we really need in this country more and more opportunities to provide alternatives to women. I'm not sure if people in this country realise that upwards of 50 million euro has now been spent on abortion services, but we're not aware of any alternatives or any investment in trying to give women in distress or parents in distress any other options? A, a, an entirely legitimate argument uh, to make, uh, Archbishop. People would point to, for example, though, the protest, uh, pictures of dead fetuses, for example, and say, that's a step too far, that's deeply upsetting uh, for women who are availing of their legal right to have those medical services. Yeah, I agree. I agree with you. But that's not what this legislation is about. This legislation is about outlawing any kind of behaviour which is near an abortion facility where, where there might be, where there could be deemed to be uh, influencing of a woman's choice. I, that would mean, for example, that even if a good friend wanted to go down and speak to someone at the as they walked into the abortion centre, look, I'll help you, I'm with you, I can offer you alternatives. That would be illegal for them to do so. Even somebody's mother, for example, if a woman's mother came down and said, look, threw her arms around and says, I'd like to help Archbishop, you. Archbishop, how, realis how realistic is that? Uh, I've heard this argument made before. How realis realistic is it that the parent of a woman would choose the opportunity of that last 100 metres to make that argument. Surely that would be an argument that or, or a case that would be made outside of that uh, prior, well prior to that. I that that, to that is something life, of a red herring argument, is it not? Not really. I think to save a life, you would go to the very last moment. And also, of course, let's remember that at the moment in the three-year review, they're talking about removing even the three-day waiting period. We could have a young woman in distress who's just learned that she's pregnant, an unwelcome pregnancy, and we're moving towards a situation where even that very same day she could have an abortion and no one would be allowed to stop her. Well, you no still have the, people will still have the right to protest 
it just be, won't be within 100 metres uh, of, of the, the, the service. So th that right to protest is still there. Um, I, I'm, I'm aware that we can, of course, and thank God, we can continue to make our voices heard about the right to life of the unborn child. But it does appear that unless the child is wanted, the unborn child has no safety, no rights whatsoever. The people before Prophet T.D. Breed Smith has condemned your comments, saying they're deeply offensive to women and uh, pregnant people who were seeking to vindicate their right to bodily autonomy. What, what, what say you to that? Well, let's just take that as an example. But there is a democratic debate going on here. This legislation is going through the shand. Anyone is entitled to express their opinion without being deemed to be offensive against women. I would like the deputy to really look at the funding for abortion in this country and ask, what are we doing to help the woman? We don't even know what are the emotional, the physical, or whatever reasons are, because there's no research, there's no, no data being kept in this country about why people go for abortion. And I really think the deputy could could be moving to to really look at these issues so that we can indeed help women. She, she might suggest, Archbishop, she and others might suggest that you're trying to refight re the abortion referendum. And, and there was a clear decision by the Irish people in that abortion referendum. Just because we had the abortion referendum does not make it right to take away the life of an unborn child. The abortion referendum took place, but the debate continues the right to life can't be taken away by any unjust law. And I think we'll continue to try to witness for the life of the mother, the life of the unborn child. And eventually Ireland will come back. It will accept the truth one day, as indeed many other parts of the world will, that we're dealing with two lives here. The gospel of life can't be silenced. Archbishop of Armagh and Primate of All Ireland, Eamon Martin, thank you for talking to News Talk Breakfast this morning.